Hey everybody, <clears throat> just uh, waiting for a couple people to jump on here. I uh, hope you're doing well. And all right, I'm just waiting just a second here for a few people. Just wanted to talk to you here <clears throat> today for a few minutes about the subject of revival and revelation. Now, not the book of Revelation. Some people call it the book of Revelations. <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as the book of Revelations. There is Revelation, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, the last book of the Bible. And so, um, but Revelation, the Bible talks a lot about Revelation, how Paul did things by Revelation. Paul went up to Jerusalem by Revelation. Paul talked about the revelation of, that's been hidden from the ages. And, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So what is a revelation? It's an unveiling. That's what it means. It means a, uh, an unveiling of, of a truth that's been hidden. Now, you know, today, oh, hey, Nicolene. Good to see you, Pastor Nicolene, all the way from South Africa. Great to see you. <laughs> um. You know, some people today mistake revelation for, I call it shock jock. And what does that mean? Well, I call it like, for a lack of better terms, kind of like there's a famous guy and he's not godly. Um, but, oh, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, he, his name is Howard Stern and he's known for being shock jock that he just does crazy stuff to just shock people and to irritate people and, and all of that stuff. Some preachers do that and they try to shock people. Whoa, wow, you know, God so loved the world and now uh, I, uh, God so loved me or, or, you know, whatever it is. And they'll just, they'll just kind of twist the words around a little bit. And hey, Michael, all the way from Ireland. Good to see you, brother. Um, but, you know, a lot of people think that's revelation. That's not revelation. Uh, shock jock is just clickbait. That's a better word for it. What is clickbait? It means that you're just trying to get people to watch or you're just trying to get people to connect with what you're doing. And so, hey, Suzanne, good to see you, Teresa from Montana. Um, so, but revelation, true Bible revelation. Hey, M Pastor Mitch, we're going to be with you. Hey, listen, all you guys who are from, uh, Wisconsin or even Minnesota, if you can, this Friday, day after tomorrow, we're going to be ministering with Pastor Mitch and Lori in Wausau. I was going to share it with you at the end, but, uh, they have an awesome church there called Living Well. And so Living Well, we're going to be ministering with them in th uh, three different days of revival services. Don't miss it. Oh, hey, hey, Missy, good to see you and, and Faith as well. <clears throat> so don't miss those meetings. But OK, so back to what I was talking about. So Revelation, Revelation knowledge, the Bible talks about it uh, even when Jesus spoke to Peter. So when Jesus spoke to Peter, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father, which is in heaven, right? So there was a revealing, there was an unveiling. Something that was hidden is now unveiled. Hey, Mona, good to see you. <clears throat> All right, so so know that that revelation knowledge, and, and, and it's, I mean, how many of you watching on here, do me a favor, just let me know below. How many of you, oh, hey, Dwayne, good to see you, bless you from Kentucky. How many of you, <clears throat> have ever read the scriptures and it was like, bam, it just, it either made sense or it like came alive or it was like mind blowing. It just really shook you. You're like, whoa, I never saw that before. And so just let me know in the comment section so I can see. But, um, oh, hey, Christopher, good to see you, man. So that's, that's what revelation is. And so you got a revelation and it's, it's kind of dances in the prophetic realm. It dances, so to speak, in the realm of the voice of God. And because that's one of the ways that God speaks to us is through revelation. And well, guess what? <clears throat> that's what revival is. So revival is a revelation of Christ. Revival 
is when that which was dead is now become alive. And so hey, that's right, Nicolene, absolutely. Well, like a light came on. And you know what? That's what First Peter says. First Peter says, until a day dawns in our hearts, right? <clears throat> and it's, so it's like a, a, an awakening of the spirit, right? And so it's when that word comes alive. It's like a scripture just became your scripture. And <clears throat> sorry. So, um, but guess what? That's what revival is. Revival is when the Holy Spirit ministers to you in such an incredibly powerful way that it's very similar to re uh, revelation. Um, now, I can tell you where I was the times that I experienced revival, okay? Now, there's a lot of churches that say revival, 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 and they call everything revival, and it really cheapens it. Um, <clears throat> it's like calling everything Italian food. Okay, you go get ragu, Italian food. Well, okay, technically, but if you've ever been to Italy and eaten real Italian food or you come from an Italian immigrant family like myself or, you know, you go to a certain place like New York or something like that where it's really authentic. Listen, you won't call everything Italian. It, it's like this. <clears throat> I used to live really close to Philadelphia. And so we uh, the first time I had a Philly cheesesteak, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have called everything Philly cheesesteak up until now. And guess what? It's not. You know what? And the same thing is true with the revival. And so, so many people, they just slap that word out there and then people think that's what it is. You know, hey, Eric, good to see you, bro. <clears throat> and so, uh, but a revelation, uh, it's when Christ is revealed so living and fresh. Hey, Pastor David, good to see you, man. Michelle, how are you, my sis? Okay. So revival, I remember with Michelle, when God touched you uh, in those centurion meetings about three, four years ago, maybe it was five years ago. And I remember you were just stuck in the, you were stuck in the sanctuary for the longest time after the service. Why? Because it was a revelation. God was revealing and that's the presence of God. That's what the, only the presence of God can do that, right? I mean, we can make an atmosphere, <clears throat> And we can create an environment. And there's certain things that we can do that can really begin to um, uh, uh, be conducive for revival, right? And so those certain elements, we can do those. But the one element, <laughs> right, Michelle? Um, so, but the one element that we cannot <clears throat> manufacture or put together is the element of the presence of God. Hey, David, good to see you from Switzerland. <clears throat> okay, so the presence of God, and that's what happens with true revival. It's not falling down. It's not shaking. It's not laughing. It's not crying. It's not repentance. It's not healing. It may have those elements in it, but what is a real revival? A real revival is when the presence of God strips away everything inside you that's not like Jesus. It's like it's like he goes up inside and pulls it out. It's like he looks for anything pharisaical inside you. The Spirit of God does, and he begins to pull that out of you, and you feel absolutely undone. There, there's no other word for it. It's a revelation. And so I don't know another term for it. So that's why for my wife and I, it's so difficult for us to hear a lot of people say revival, revival, revival. We already had a revival. There's a revival, a couple of revivals over there. They've got a revival. It's like, come on, dude, come on, come on. You know, throwing ketchup on noodles. That's, that's not Italian food, okay? You know, putting some meat and cheese on a sandwich. That's not a Philly cheesesteak, you understand? My South African friends, a real braai is not a barbecue, okay? Is that right? A braai is not a barbecue. It's totally different. And it's got certain elements. Yes, it's got the fire. Yes, it's got the meat. Yes, it's got, but it's different. It's different. Guess what? The same thing is true with revival. It has those elements. Yes, very true. 
But let me encourage you that above and beyond those elements is a, an incredible impacting where you learn to become vulnerable to the Holy Spirit. So I just want to challenge you with that word today. Encourage your heart that when you read the word, uh, hey, Peter, good to see you. So when you read the word, look for the revelation. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it. I had an incredible one this week. It was just like, wow, it's just like so amazing when God breathes on the scriptures like that, right? Guess what? It's the exact same thing. It's the presence of God on the actual ink on paper. So the, the presence of God comes onto the ink on the paper, right? And so uh, good to see you, Pastor Tony. All right. So that's what it is. The presence of God comes on the ink on the paper. Yes, but it comes alive. It comes alive in your heart. And you're like, oh my goodness. It's like it takes your breath away because you saw something that was there for thousands of years, right? Guess what? The same exact same thing is true with revival. Revival is not just a service. It's not giggling. It's not falling down and stuff. Don't call it that because it cheapens it. It cheapens it. And, and it's, it's like, why? Because it's when the presence of God comes and touches your life, wham. And, and that's why these revivals that took place um, over the last 2,000 years have been so life-changing to a community, <clears throat> to individuals, and to, uh, uh, you name it, to government, everything. Pastor Geyer, ah, bless you, man. Love you from Norway. Okay? So, but I want to encourage you with that word. It's the presence of God. It's the presence of God that breathes on the scriptures, bam, causes revelation, right? But guess what? It's the presence of God as well that comes into a, 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 an individual heart that begins to minister something so deep and so life transforming. And now get this, are you ready for this? Sometimes it begins with an offense. Sometimes, hey, Brother Roy, good to see you, man. I haven't talked to you in a while. I need to give you a call. Uh, Renell, bless you. Um, so, so it's when the presence of God comes, right? So it's not just good singing. <clears throat> you understand? So it's not just good singing. Get that out of your head. Just not everything that says revival is revival. You know, I mean, I think to myself of back in 1906, of course, I wasn't there then, but from all accounts in Azusa Street, um, you know, here you had uh, Seymour's wife. Well, she wasn't his wife at the time, but she began to play the piano very poorly. But as she did, the fire of God fell and people were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Lives were totally transformed. People launched into ministry, uh, you know, alcoholics and, and, and all kinds of different addicts delivered in a minute. What was that? That was the presence of God. It's the presence of God, right? That's why I'm glad Roy's on here. It's the presence of God when Roy plays. That's, that's the beauty of the worship that he plays. I've seen people play the same song. I've seen them play the same chords. And it still doesn't have the same result. Why? Because it's the presence of God that flows through that worship and it impacts and totally changes uh, the heart. And so, and that's the beauty of revival, amen? So the beauty of revival is the exact same as revelation. So when God speaks to you a revelation, guess what? It's that presence that hit your Bible that made it come alive inside of you. Hey, Missy, good to see you. It's the presence of God that's on that Bible that makes it come alive in you. Now get this, it's a promise. God is promising you that he will do the same thing in you, not just with the scripture, but it will go in you. That leaven will go in you and affect the whole lump. Remember that when Jesus said the leaven, the woman put leaven in the lump. She didn't take the leaven out. She put the leaven in. See, and that's what revival does. Revival goes in. Wow. It causes Zacchaeus to come down from the tree. 
And he says, Lord, whatever I've stolen, I'll restore it seven times. Jesus didn't preach a sermon on the seven steps of repentance if you've stolen things. You understand? What did Jesus do? He just walked in that presence. And so he even carried it outside of just quote unquote church meetings and stuff. Amen. So I pray this blesses you guys today. We love and appreciate you. Hey, do me a monstrous favor. Put this on your Facebook, share it to some of your friends. Go to our website, sharethefire.org. And we've got some new stuff on there that's really exciting. We want you to check out. And hey, good to see you, Hector, from uh, Puerto Rico. Um, and so um, we want to encourage you to go there, sharethefire.org. Also, by this weekend, our ministrytraininginstitute.com website is going to be completed. And so we've got some courses there, some new stuff there. I know it'll be a great blessing to you. So go check that out, uh, ministrytraininginstitute.com. And uh, let's see, today is Wednesday, so probably by Saturday it should be 100% functional, okay? Love you guys. Bless you. Walk in revival and walk in tremendous revelation. Blessings.